Okay, so before we get into the chemical part, let's finish up the rest of the electrical part. So looking at the axon, have you noticed those weird little teeny tiny burrito wrapped around on the axon? Well, those things are called malin sheath. The word sheath, it means cover, like the sword cover. Those are sheath too. So before we learn the purpose of the malin sheath, we're going to learn what it is. So let's take a zoom in. Okay, so there are our malin sheath cross cut. The malin sheath is made of a cell called a swan cell. So the swan cell is obviously named after the person who discovered it. So basically we have cells that are wrapped around other cells. In this case the swan cells are wrapped around the neuron. Between each burrito there's a small empty space of the axon still visible. Those are called the nodes of Ranier. So remember how our action potential travel down an axon? This would be the typical for most of the animals. But for more complex organisms like us, we have these malin sheath. So what happens is when the action potential travel down the axon, it doesn't go just straight. What happens is it actually jumped from nodes to node. Because of the malin sheath, it helps to speed up the action potential. So the AP is jumping between the mailing sheet from node to node and at the same time it doesn't lose its strength at all. And this is one of the many other factors that separate us higher complex organisms compared to the other organisms. Okay, so back to the question. It's chemical at the synapse. So here we're looking at the synapse the empty space between one axon terminal and a dendrite of another neuron is called the synaptic cleft. So here what's happening is the neurotransmitter, the little green dot, is being carried by the vesicle of the axon terminal of one of the previous neuron and that is going to be sent out to the membrane through the synaptic cleft and it's going to attach to the ligand gated ion channel of the dendrite of the other neuron to open up the gate. So before in the past we learned that when the gate channel opens sodium and potassium will influx and efflux but the question is we never learned how the channel is open. Now we know how the channel is open. So the channel is open by the neurotransmitter of the other previous neuron. So as the gates open the action potential is being generated at the dendrite. That's correct. So at the synapse, the uh, neurotransmitter from the other um, neurons will open the channel and then the channel on the dendrite will eventually start to generate an action potential. Once the action potential is fully generated, it's going to travel down the axon and it's going to travel really fast jumping from node to node with the help of the malin sheath. So now we're going to zoom out and look at a bigger picture. We're going to see the action potential between neurons. So here we have the uh, action terminal of one of the neurons connected to the dendrite of the other ones. And basically it's going to send a message, the excitatory message, called E1. Now this is gen trying to generate an action potential on the next neuron and then it keeps repeating. So if the E1 is being sent at different time frame further apart from each other, the strength is not going to be strong enough to generate an action potential. Now we're going to look at a different event. Here we're having the same stuff again except this time if the excitatory is sent twice and is sent faster than before, then it's going to be strong enough to create an action potential. This is called the temporal summation, temporal being time. So we see that if the neurotransmitter is being sent quickly enough, we can generate an action potential at the axon. The E stands for excitatory, which means to excite. So what's happening here, it's called an EPSP, that means excitatory postsynaptic potential. Yes, it's quite a big word, but we can break it down. For example, let's start with the middle, postsynaptic. You know what postsynaptic is, right? I taught it to you, remember? Okay, fine, let's break it down smaller. Let's look at the word synaptic from the word synapse. What's a synapse? Okay, good. Now, the cell 
the neuron that is before the synapse is called the presynaptic cell, and the one that's after the synapse is called the postsynaptic cell. So now we know what postsynaptic is. Well, yeah, science has been named for everything, just like you. You have a name for pretty much all of your little plush kitty toy, even though they all look the same, right? Okay, so postsynaptic is basically referring to the neuron that is receiving the message, potential as in the action potential of the postsynaptic, and the excitatory, it means to excite. So basically, EPSP is to excite, to create the action potential on the receiving neuron. Now, another way to create an action potential, instead of the same E sending two quick messages, it could be two different E coming from two different axon terminals, I mean from different neurons. If they're both connected to the same dendrite and they both send a neurotransmitter at the same time or nearly the same time, rapid succession, then it's going to be strong enough to create an action potential. So either way is fine. It's either a temporal summation or a spatial summation. Spatial summation in this case is two different excitatory from different neuron connected to the same dendrite to create an action potential. Now, opposite of the EPSP is the IPSP, which is the inhibitory. So, when you have one that is exciting the uh, dendrite of the neuron, you can also have another one that is inhibiting from the action potential from happening. So basically, this would be causing the same thing as the first part where there is no action potential is being created because it's being inhibited. So we have no problem with the IPSP, right? Since we already know what EPSP is, we can figure out what IPSP stands for. The purpose of the IPSP is to negate action potential. So here we're looking at some samples of neurons. As you can see, for example, the interneuron, which is the neuron between all of your body, there's millions and millions of them, uh, millions of them connected all with one or with another. So what happened is, 